The views and opinions of this broadcast do not reflect the views and opinions of Armed Media, Unu Productions and its affiliates. Enjoy the show. Thanks for tuning in. This is Tuesday night right here on Armed Radio, and you're listening to 2AT, Second Amendment Talk. I am Daniel Sanders, and joining me as always is Rod Burks. Rod, how you doing this evening? Hey, um, you know, I'm living the quarantine life, just loving it. Uh, yeah, man, this quarantine mess is about to drive me absolutely batshit crazy. I'm starting to realize why Jack Nicholson's character went insane and tried to murder his family in The Shining. You know, that's an interesting movie. Um, I, I actually hadn't thought of that. Um, it, maybe if uh, she had owned a firearm, um, yeah, yeah, he, he wouldn't have been able to, uh, yeah, yeah, tor- torture and torment them as long as he did. That's 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 a pretty good point. That is a pretty good point. Absolutely. So as we always do at the start of every show here, we want to give a big shout out to the troops, to the men and women serving overseas and on the home front. We appreciate everything y'all are doing for us. Keep up the good work. Come home safe. We're all rooting for you here back home. Um, got a lot to discuss, and I think I think everything we've got to discuss tonight is revolving around uh, House Resolution five seven one seven and Senate Bill three two five four. These are um, the, these are the measures trying to be passed um, for gun reform, and uh, I think it's I think it's the House resolution that they're actually still actively working on right now in the midst of all of this uh, quarantine mess that's going on. So it's kind of uh, you know well no, no, a- actually the, the the House resolution five seven one seven was introduced back in January. Um, it was Elizabeth Warren who introduced it to. The Senate, um, like, I think it was two days after the uh, coronavirus was declared a pandemic, and that's S3254. Um, But don't be confused. The two are identical. They're both 260 pages long, um, and they are a copy and paste of one another. Yeah, absolutely. So um, we are going to discuss in detail um, specifically uh, Title V assault weapons and firearms silencers and mufflers ban. Um, And right now I'm looking at uh, definitions and it says in general, section 921A of title 18 United States code is amended one by inserting after paragraph 29, the following paragraph 30, the term semi-automatic pistol means any repeating pistol that a utilizes a portion of the energy of a firing cartridge to extract the fired cartridge case and chamber the next round, and B, requires a separate pull of the trigger to fire each cartridge. Now, again, these are just definitions, um, and it's, it's really unclear to me at this point why they are including... Uh, definitions for a semi-automatic pistol and an assault weapons ban. Right. I think it's, they're setting the stage for um, further action. Uh, You know, I like to think that there's not a chance in hell that this thing would ever see the light of day. Um, but you know, that kind of thinking is, is how a lot of people have, have seen their rights, um, eroded away. So I, I, that's why I look at this and, and, and I'm a little bit shocked at, at one, how detailed and accurate it is, um, for, for anybody who, who isn't uh, familiar, even the name on it sounds, um, the name of the, the bill, um, and, and I want to read it verbatim. 
uh, is called the Gun Violence Prevention and Community Safety Act of 2020. So it, it you know, it's, it, it, wow, a title like that, who wouldn't be like, yeah, I'm all about it. Um, but, but it's much more sinister than, than, yeah, we want to protect people. It, they need to just change it and say, this is our biggest um, uh, swing at people control in the United States. Yeah, absolutely. I agree. Um, and it goes on and on and on. Um, so, you know, semi-automatic pistol, uh, that was paragraph 30. Paragraph 31, the term semi-automatic shotgun means any repeating shotgun that utilizes a portion of the energy to fire the cartridge and extract the fired cartridge chamber the next round requires a separate pull of the trigger to fire each cartridge and by adding at the end of the following... And then for some reason, it skips on to paragraph 37. The term semi-automatic assault weapon means any of the following, regardless of the country of manufacture or caliber of ammunition accepted. A, a semi-automatic rifle that has the capacity to accept a detachable magazine and any one of the following. A pistol grip, a forward grip, a folding, telescoping, or detachable stock, or is otherwise foldable or adjustable in a manner that operates to reduce the length, size, or any other dimension, or otherwise enhances the concealability of the weapon. A grenade launcher, a barrel shroud, and a threaded barrel. A semi-automatic rifle that has a fixed magazine with the capacity of accept to accept more than 10 rounds, except... For an attached tubular device designed to accept and capable of operating only with 22 caliber rim fire ammunition. Any part, combination of parts, component, device, attachment, or accessory that is designed or functions to accelerate the rate of fire of a semi automatic rifle but not convert it, not convert the semi automatic rifle into a machine gun. A semi automatic pistol, it goes on and on and on. It's just, you know, it's a, it's a little bit droning. But at the yeah, same yeah, time, I, mean, I also feel... Pages, but, but, but I've read all of it, and, and from what I've gathered, the, the, the biggest points, that, and, and the first one that, I, um, that really kind of gave me um, heartburn was they want to create a national permit requirement in order for you to one buy a gun and two for the guns you already own um along with creating a national registry gun registry that is searchable by any law enforcement without a warrant so um if you know somebody files a complaint against you or i or anybody law enforcement without a warrant can search to see what guns you have registered um which, you know, I, I understand for the sake of, hey, yeah, you, you want to know what you're up against, but that's why we have due process. So that's why they have to get a warrant, right, for, to, to, to get all this information. I mean, I understand that, that it's, um, uh, it, 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 it's, man, I, I want to support and protect the boys in blue. Um, but at the same time, I, I think that, that every boy in blue is also a United States citizen and, and should, should appreciate, um, you know, the, what you own in your private safe is private, right? But but the law then goes on to ban virtually every semi-automatic rifle in the private hands in the country, making it a felony to purchase a high-capacity magazine. Taxes on firearms go up 30%, ammunition 50%, and anyone who buys more than one gun in a one-month period is going to jail. Then you also have to lock up your guns at all times. That doesn't mean you get... Uh, that essentially is doing away with being able to carry concealed. It would criminalize the sale of any firearm to anyone under the age of 21, and it bans the sale of suppressors and makes it a crime to construct a gun in your own house. Yeah, and I think what you mean by uh, constructing a gun in your own house, I think what they're referring to that is what they started calling the ghost gun thing, uh, people using... Um, schematics and 3d printers to um basically make their own uh ar lower receivers and components and all that other stuff uh 
Well, right, but but if if I wanted to um, change the barrel on a gun, right? Uh, let, let's say I want to go from a 16 inch barrel to a 20 inch barrel. Um, does can, can they then use that um, as, as hey, it's a crime because you are now building your own guns? Yeah, you know, it's they're they're doing a really good job of um, trying to cover loopholes and all that other stuff, and or not really covering loopholes, but giving themselves loopholes to say, oh, well, you made this barrel for this gun, so now you've made your own gun, and that's illegal. Right, and 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 this is is the, uh, man, th this isn't like any other. Um... Yeah, law or or, or uh, anti gun um, or anti Second Amendment act I've ever seen before. Um, this thing is is it's massive. Uh, for, for our listeners out there, please go look up HR five seven one seven or uh, was S two three five four four five. No, four, uh, five, four. And, uh, you know, read through it. I mean, it, it even talks about where they're going to get the money to buy back uh, semi-automatic assault weapons, as they define them, and large capacity magazines. So, so here's what they're doing. They're taking your money to buy back products that you already bought, and they're giving it to, to who? Right, right. So, 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 wait a minute. I spent money on this magazine or this firearm. Um, the government's going to give me pennies of uh, on the dollar of what it's worth. Um, and and the money they're going to give me is already my money that I gave to them to fix roads and protect my family. But now they want to use that money to disarm me, so I can't protect my family. Yeah, absolutely. That's 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 pretty much it in a nutshell. Um, and, you know, like you and I were talking before the show, it's you know, who, whoever wrote this, you know, you see you see the politicians go on TV. Um, Sheila Jackson Lee and her AR-15 that weighs as much as, uh, you know, however many boxes she said that you would move or. or um God, I don't even—I don't even know the guy's name. Um, holding up an AR-15, calling it a ghost gun, and saying, uh, you know, capability of dispersal of, you know, thirty rounds a second with a thirty caliber clip. You know, all of these politicians—they get on there, they open their mouth, and you can tell they don't know jack shit about what they're talking about. But then, the person that actually wrote this is very, very well informed in firearm terms, firearms themselves. Uh, I mean, there there is just a list that goes on and on and on and on naming uh, manufacturers and models of weapons that they're trying to have banned with this. You, you know, I mean, I'm, I, I I enjoy firearms as much as the next guy. Um, maybe not more than some, but um, I would say more than a few anyway. Um, and and I see this list as a shopping list. I mean, I, like I'm like, wow, I, I don't, I've never even heard of you know, a fill in the blank. Um, but if the government wants to ban it, I should have it. Yeah, I agree. Um, you know, it's like we've said time and time again before, you know, if a government is allowed to have it, we should be allowed to have it as well, because the Second Amendment was written as a means to give the people protection from a tyrannical government. Yeah, you're exactly right. I mean, the... the... The Second Amendment wasn't necessarily there to um, allow us to hunt, um, although I think that, you know, the fact that you have to get a uh, fishing license um, to fish and a, and a hunting license to hunt, um, oh, yeah, I support it. You know, I'm, I'm all about, um, you know, conservation and, and giving money. Yeah, I, I don't know if you've seen that. Um, uh, a little bit of a tangent. It just popped into my head. What was it? The, the, the Tiger King or something like that. 
Um, so, so basically, you you have all of these uh, people who own these big big cats, right? Like tigers and lions and shit. Um, and 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 they're they're all attacking each other. One guy actually goes to jail for attempted murder. I think. Um, I I haven't got that far into it, but um, yeah, yeah. It, it's it. All they're doing is is creating all this drama in order to um, increase sales or whatever. Uh, or get more people to come and check out their their parks or their zoos or whatever. Um, I, I gotta wonder because this is so detailed. Is it, is this some kind of like um, sideways attempt to stir up panic so that 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 people go out and start you know buying tons of guns? I mean, because right now un, under this stay at home, I called it quarantine earlier. It's really stay at home. Uh, under the stay at home, um, gun stores are considered essential. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, and, and, you know, I agree, too, especially with everything going on. You know, like I talked on uh, last week's show with, uh, um, you know, my friend worried that uh, somebody was casing his house, trying to break in all that other stuff with all of this quarantine mess going on. Yeah, I would I would say gun shops are essential. Absolutely. Right, so if if gun shop is considered essential, uh, along with um, you know our our healthcare professionals, um, you know the, the people who are keeping our fuel stations and our grocery stores up and running, um, so so that that we can continue to function at least um, uh, until things get back to normal, whatever that new normal will be, I don't know, um, but but you know, and, and I did want to take an opportunity to think. To thank all of our our um, healthcare professionals who, who knowingly, you know, they, and, and rightfully so. I I don't think there's anybody more essential um, than, than our, our 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 nurses, our doctors, you know, anybody who who's providing care who, who knowingly um, is is exposing themselves, um, and then also potentially exposing the people they love the most in order to help people uh, to continue to help people when it would be just as easy to say, eh, you know. I'm, um, you know, I'm not feeling well. I, I was exposed to somebody who was high risk, so yeah, I don't want to, I don't want to go into work and get anybody else sick. You know, it'd be pretty easy to hide behind that, that, um, that veil. Um, but, but they, they're still out there. They're, they're doing their job. They're busting their butt. And um, yeah, I, I just wanted to thank them real quick. Uh, I know it's in the middle of the show, but I got it. I'm done. Yeah, no, I agree, and I'll, and I'll take the same opportunity too because I have a lot of friends that are. Uh healthcare professionals and lab techs, um, you know, first responders, all of those. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I think, I think it's well worth taking a break from what we're talking about right now to give them a shout out and say, thank you for everything that they're doing. Absolutely. Right, right, right. So, um, yeah, I, I just went to appendix a, of the um, the firearms, um, uh, uh, I can't remember the name of the bill, 5717, um, and it talks about firearms that are exempted by the assault weapons ban of 2012. Um, and uh, the, the first thing I noticed on there uh, was an M1 Garand. <laughs> I was like, yes. Uh, I mean, th there is no finer implement of war, um, according to the patent. But it, um, yeah, yeah, the Ruger Mini 14. Um, yeah, yeah. So, so there was, a, and 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 that was just the the auto loaders, as they call them. They're not calling them semi-automatic. I noticed, but yeah, interesting. And I think one of the biggest reasons why is you know the the M14 and the M1 Garand um, and the M1 carbine, all of those. None of those have pistol grips on them. They all have wood stocks. However. Um, today's variant of the M14, the, the, uh, the mini 14, I've, I've seen, I've seen a lot of people buy aftermarket stocks for those that you could put, you know, telescoping stock and pistol grip and all kinds of other stuff on there. Um, so I, I don't, I don't really see what they're accomplishing with that. Again, I think they're setting the stage for for a a bigger um, move to to confiscate or to control people, really, to take away their abilities to defend themselves. 
Yeah, and you know that's the other thing too. I, I'm, I'm sitting here looking at all of these uh, definitions and firearms that are listed and everything, and it's and, and it lists on here. I'm still curious about this one. Any shotgun with a revolving cylinder. I want to know what they mean by that because oh, oh, oh Google it. It's really cool. It basically looks like a revolver, um, but it's it, it's like the size of a shotgun. Now I don't know if like the judge. Because the judge can also shoot. Correct me if I'm wrong. Like a 45 or or, or a, a, a Colt 45 or something. Or am I, am I mistaken? Yeah, it fires a uh, either a 45 long Colt or a 410 shotgun shell. Hmm. And, and who makes the judge? I'm, I'm going to see if it's on this uh, list. Uh, Taurus does. Yeah, while you're looking at that, I'm going to start at the top of the list here. Um, all of the following rifles, copies, duplicates, variants, or altered facsimiles with the capability of any such weapon thereof. All AK types, including the following. AK, AK-47, AK-47S, pretty much any kind of AK you can think of. Um... What else have they got on here? The NHM-90, NHM-91, the Rock River LAR-47, the SA-85 and 93, the Vector Arms AK-47, I, the Vector you know, and the Foster uh, 10. I, think, I may have found it. Uh, the, the Taurus circle, Circuit Judge Shotgun is exempt. Now, I don't know if that's what, what, what you know is endearingly called the Judge. Well, there's only one way to find out. Let's just check and see here. Okay, so... All right, so I wonder if, um, you know, certain... Well, I've got I've got pictures of the Taurus Circuit Judge on here. Um, it's actually not the Taurus; it's the Rossi USA Circuit Judge forty five four ten. Um, and yeah, it basically looks like a it it looks like a rifle with a with a revolving cylinder. I see variants on here that have what appears to be a lever action, um, all kinds of stuff. So yeah, I don't. I don't know if the Taurus judge is considered part of that ban or not. I mean, they very specifically name the gun uh, that is exempt uh, to great detail. So I, I'm, I'm led to believe that the judge, as, as 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 we're thinking, which is the basically it's a revolver that you can fit in your in your pocket, um, well, albeit a very large pocket, um, would be considered. Uh, unlawful under this new act. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and it goes on to list uh, all AR types, including the following. The AR-10, the AR-15. I'm not even going to read them all because there's like, uh, I want to say there's like 14 or 15 uh different ones that they have on here. Look, even the Armalite M15 22 long rifle carbine they have listed on here. A 22 long... Yeah. It goes back to what they were saying earlier, any semi-automatic right. rifle with the exception of one with a tubular device that will accept Rimfire 22. So as long as it has a tube feeder... For a 22 long rifle, you're fine. So I wonder if I could convert an AR-15 to accept a tube feeder. Mm, well, it also bans anything belt-fed, like the um, the single-shot version, the civilian version of the uh, M249, um, uh, made by FN. And, you know, it's belt-fed, but it's semi-automatic. Um, it, it's banned by this bill as well. Yeah, you know, that's the funny thing. They even went so far as to ban the high point carbine. I, you know, call me crazy. Um, 
if if I had to choose between a high point anything and a rock, I'm going to use a rock to defend myself. Well, I don't know how much does the high point weigh. I mean, they, they look pretty big. I mean, aren't they over the 50 ounces that they said? Uh, I mean, I don't know. I, I, I'm only imagining them weighing with my eyes. I've never actually, uh, you know, put it on the scale. But, yeah, I I, I agree with that that sentiment. Although, I mean, I would throw the high point first. Um, just make sure it's unloaded because, you know, how embarrassing would that be to be shot with a, a gun that you threw at somebody? <laughs> Okay, here we go. This is part of the banned list. The Sturm, Ruger, and Company Mini-14 Tactical Rifle M14-20 CF. Now, that is, that is a Mini-14 that is on the banned list. Now, didn't you say on the exempt list earlier the Mini-14 was part of the exempt list? Um, it, 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 it was in parents and it said without the folding or telescopic uh, stuff, but yes, it, it did say the rules were really important. Okay, so right now, as I said, it's got the Sturm Ruger and Company Mini-14 Tactical Rifle M14-20 CF. So... I think that's setting up a base, like you said, that's setting up a basis for them to eventually come after all rifles because they've got it on here, the Mini-14 tactical rifle, but on the exempt list, they've got the Mini-14 as long as it doesn't have a folding or telescopic stock. Well, later on down the road, somebody can say, oh, well, uh, we've got this version of the Mini-14 band, and this Mini-14 is okay, but it can be converted to this version, so we need to just go ahead and ban the Mini-14 entirely. Yeah, this is a slippery slope, you know, I mean, like, like we're on the precipice here, and, and, and once you start leaning and saying that some guns are okay and some guns are not, um, it's, it's, it's really, really difficult to, to, to then go back and draw the line and say, no, 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 this, this shouldn't have been included or something that hasn't been invented yet. Um, but they're also increasing the penalties for knowingly make, making false statements, um, basically changing it from um, a one year to a five year sentence uh, if you make any false claims uh, with regards to firearms. Um, it also makes it illegal for you to traffic firearms, which, okay, yeah, trafficking is bad unless you're a dealer. Um, but but it, it, if you get in here to the, the details, it says it is unlawful, uh, regardless of whether anything of value is exchanged to ship, transport, transfer, or otherwise dispose to a person two or more firearms in an affecting interstate or foreign commerce if the transfer knows or has reasonable cause to believe that such shipping, transfer, transportation, a transfer disposition of the firearm would be in violation or would result in the violation of any federal, state, or local law punishable by a term of imprisonment exceeding one year. So, so you know, this thing's 260 pages long. Um, I wonder if the, the, the people who... Um, introduced it on the floor of the House and the Senate um, are even familiar with uh, all of the rules inside of it. Um, so, so here it is, it, it's saying, oh, well, you should have reasonably known that, you know, be, because what if I want to go to a friend's house in Alabama, Texas, or wherever um, to go hunting? Um, you know, I, I guess I would have to just carry my own firearm, um, my own firearms, right? Uh, which makes sense, you know, because I mean, I don't know about it anymore, but I used to fly, you know, I would check them, you know, obviously I can't, I can't check my ammo. Um, I would have to buy new ammo when I got there. Um, but it sounds like that, that, yeah, you, you, you can be considered um, trafficking if you are um, shipping, transporting or transferring, or no, no, not or, tra I'm sorry to ship, transport, transfer, or otherwise dispose to a person. So, so the, the Oxford comma is there. So that tells me that, that all of those do not necessarily uh, pertain to dispose to a, a person. So, so shipping, transport, and transferring two or more firearms, um, yeah, sounds like a criminal offense to me.
Yeah, so I'm I'm sitting here uh I'm sitting here going back over uh some some more of the the band weapons and so on and so forth. And I'm sitting here it says all of the following shotguns, copies, duplicates, variants or altered facsimiles with the capability of any such weapon thereof. And then next, uh, the Anacon MC 1980, uh, the Doric Lethal Shotguns, the Franchi Law 12 and Spaz 12, uh, all Ismash Saiga 12 types, the Street Sweeper and the Striker 12. Now, you know, call me crazy. The streets, I'm, if I'm not mistaken, the Street Sweeper is the street name of the Striker 12, if I'm not mistaken. Isn't that correct? I, you know, I'm not even, I'm, I'm, I'm not even sure what the Striker 12 was. I, I thought a Street Sweeper was like the Mac 11 or Mac 10 or something, but, but, you know, I, 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 I only, um, can be wrong about that because of what I've seen on TV. I mean, I've never actually seen or, or held, dealt with one. Well, I know, I know you've, uh, at the very least, you've seen it in movies or on TV. It's the shotgun that's got the uh, the large uh, circular drum on it, and then it's got the foregrip with the pistol grip, and then it's either got a fixed stock or a top folding stock, you know, all of that stuff like that. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, that is actually the Striker 12, and if I'm not mistaken, Street Sweeper was like the 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 ghetto term for it, I guess is, or I won't, I won't say ghetto. That's. Mm. Yeah. The, the, the street name, right? Yeah. Uh, then it goes on to say all belt fed semi-automatic firearms, including the TNW M2 HB and FN M2495, um, which as we've already stated, that's the civilian variant of the M249 squad automatic weapon. Uh, let's see. Did I hear you say M2? Like the Maw Deuce? Uh, it says the TNW M2 HB. Not sure what that is. I'll have to look that up. Hmm. Yeah, Yeah, that's, yeah, that's, that's that's basically, that's basically a 50 cal is what it is. It's a Maw Deuce. Well, um, I'm glad to know that they're banning the Maw Deuce from, um, you know, your, your average deer hunter. I'm wondering if, because it's not, it's not a Browning, uh, I wonder if the TNW is like a civilian variant. Um, but, I mean, everything about it, you know, it's 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 got the butterfly trigger, it's got the, the handles, all of it. I'm wondering if that might be a civilian variant of the Mahdus. Hmm. And, 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 yeah, yeah, it must be. Um... And if it is, I want to know why I'm just now finding out about this and why I don't have one. And 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 that brings me back to my point. Um, this has now become a wish list of of things that that you know, I, I absolutely, <laughs> yeah. if I can't own, I at least want to shoot before they become uh, felonies. Now it has uh, paragraph thirty eight on here. The term large capacity ammunition feeding device means any magazine, belt, drum, feed strip, or similar device, including any such device joined or coupled with another in any manner, that has an overall capacity of, or that can be readily restored, changed, or converted to accept more than 10 rounds of ammunition, and does not include an attached tubular device designed to accept and capable of operating only with 22 caliber rimfire ammunition. Now, that's where including any such device joined or coupled with another in any manner. So that means if you've got two 10 round magazines for let's, let, let's just say you find some variant of a semi-automatic rifle that has a 10 round capacity magazine, detachable box magazine that is somehow legal. Despite all of this BS they got in here, you find one. If you attach if you get a magazine doubler, or even if you just tape the magazines together, two 10-round magazines, it is illegal according to 
what this ban is saying. Hmm. Yeah, I, I wonder if, like, you know, sometimes you see, like, the double drums or something like that, um, you know, or taking, yeah, yeah, like, like two magazines and having them so you flip it over. Is that, um, is, is that what they're saying? Oh, we can only wonder. Well, I mean, that's my interpretation of it. It says, including any such device joined or coupled with another in any manner. So if you've got a magazine doubler or if you do the Vietnam thing and, you know, just duct tape two of your magazines together so that way you drop one, flip it, and you're good to go. Yeah, it's illegal under this. Hmm. And, and, you know, I'm also curious to know, um, they talk about a training requirement in order to get a, um, a, a basically a permit or a license to own firearms that you've already bought. Um, I wonder if the, the military are exempt. I mean, who's responsible for, for setting the, 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 the curriculum? You know, what, what is that bar of somebody who is adequately trained and firearms that's a good question and you know i think the <laughs> i think their number one enemy is going to be the person they go to for the training and that's going to be the national rifle association hmm bingo now here it, one of the one of the items listed on a semi-automatic weapon, um, one of the any other items along with a detachable box m magazine that would uh, make the weapon illegal, the term barrel shroud, and it defines barrel shroud as a shroud that is a t that is attached to or partially or completely encircles the barrel of a firearm so that the shroud protects the user of the firearm from heat generated by the barrel and does not include a slide that partially or completely encloses the barrel or an, an extension of the stock along the bottom of the barrel which does not encircle or substantially encircle the barrel. So they are wanting to ban a device that is designed to protect the user from injuring themselves while operating the firearm. Yeah, yeah. So, so does that include like uh, handguards? I mean, because it, it it sounds like. Well, I mean, by definition, um, a handguard does encircle the barrel uh, either partially or completely so yeah that i think they would probably consider that to be a barrel shroud hmm, interesting you know there, there's something else that it mentions in here about uh due process w with regards to the red flag law um under confiscation it says that that um you have no more than 30 days to plead your case um, in order to uh, regain possession of your firearms if they've been confiscated or surrendered to law enforcement as part of a protective order. Yeah, the more the more I'm reading over this, the more the more I see the more the more I see a revolution starting if this were to be passed. Um, it goes on to say the term pistol grip means a grip, a thumbhole stock, or a Thordson type grip or stock, or any other characteristic that can function as a grip. Well, hell, a damn basic wood stock on a M1 Garand or any any hunting rifle could technically be considered a grip. Hmm. Yeah, and and, and I, I I'm pretty sure that that they're they're talking about a pistol grip, but um, they don't want to confuse people um yet because they'll go after the pistols next. Um, or, earlier I I did want to clarify I I misspoke um when I talked about guns being um 
uh, secured, and, and, and it says that they must be secured in a gun storage or safety device or located in, uh, or in a location which uh, a reasonable person would believe it was secure um, and carries the firearm on his or her person or within such close proximity thereto that the person can readily retrieve and use the firearm as if the person carried the firearm on his or her person. So it kind of sounds like, yeah, if, um, if, if you're legal um, under this law, if you've, if you've made it this far, then yeah, you can carry it under your seat or on your person in your vehicle. Yeah, I don't know. They're, they're, they're leaving a lot of that stuff to misinterpretation. And uh, you know, like I said, the, the way they're writing this thing, it's like they're leaving themselves loopholes to say, oh, no, that's not what this means. This is actually illegal. I don't care what your interpretation is. This is the law. Yeah, and, and, and they're absolutely uh, going after the, uh, the dealers, too, because it talks about um, I, and, and I, I can only imagine the level of, of scrutiny that dealers have to deal with uh, to maintain their FFLs. Um, and, and, and that's under today, uh, today's um, standard. But, you know, I, I'm not sure. But it talks about, hey, if, if you work in a gun shop, you have to have, you know, active uh, background checks. Um, you know, you have to have an enhanced background investigation of everybody. You have to have more documentation. So, so it really sounds like they're doing what they can to prevent people from really, uh, unless they're making a lot of money at it, um, uh, from being dealers. You know, they're, they're basically trying to run your, your, your small mom and pop shops. Um, out of business and just leave it to the big box stores like Walmart who, who says, oh, well, you know, we're, we're doing away with, you know, anything that's not hunting or, or I, I'm not exactly sure what their modus operandi is, but I've, I've noticed that, that they definitely don't have pistols and the, the, they don't have any AR type weapons. It, it looks like they only have like your, um, your, your, your Ruger 1022 type Rifles, maybe some shotguns, maybe a few hunting rifles. Um, you know, I avoid the place anyway. Um, like the Corona, boom, boom, boom. But you get my point. Yeah, you know, I'm sitting here. Um, I am looking over all of the uh, the licensing stuff for the uh, for the federal firearms license that they have listed in here, and uh, let's see. I'm not seeing anywhere in here that says a federal firearms license is basically allows the individual to carry like, like how it is right now. My Alabama concealed carry permit does not allow me to carry my firearm in the state of Illinois. For example, Illinois does not recognize my Alabama concealed carry permit. And I'm not seeing any provisions in here that says a federal firearms license is a nationwide approval to carry. Yeah, I, I did a little um, word finder search um, on this, uh, the text of 5717, and I typed in the word dealer, and their name comes up. Uh, the, the the word dealer comes up 81 times, um, you know, in, in a document that's 260 pages long. Um, yeah, that that's a pretty regular occurrence of a word. I mean, considering the last, um, I'm scrolling through, or maybe not the last, but a bunch of those pages is just a list of firearms by name, type, model, and serial. Yeah, Title Seven of HR five seven one seven covers uh, f um, dealer reform, uh, gun shop security measures, inspections, employee background checks, gun store thefts, civil enforcement. You know, I'm going to look at gun store thefts. I want to. I, I want to find out if, if they're holding gun stores liable for thefts. Yeah, and, and while you're doing that, the the, the section on. Um... Uh, prohibition on possession of certain firearm accessories. So they, 
they, they've gone in and and this is why you know earlier i mentioned i i said somebody who is really smart who wrote this um because it talks about uh, it, it, you know the bureau of alcohol tobacco uh, firearms and explosives the uh, BATFE, um has you know, uh, has many opinion letters, right? Um, but this goes in and essentially uh, dictates to them uh, or to all of us, uh, it is unlawful for any person to have anything, um, whether they manufacture it, sell it, import it, uh, or even just to possess it, a trigger crank, bump fire, uh, or any part, combination of parts, component, device, attachment, or accessories that is designed or functions to materially accelerate the rate of fire of a semi-automatic, but not convert the semi-automatic rifle to a machine gun. So, so they're saying, yeah, you can have a semi-automatic rifle, and that's fine, um, but it better not shoot faster than whatever it was designed to do. So, uh, even lighting, uh, you know, taking, putting a lighter spring um, on a trigger for, let's say, competition reasons, um, that could, I think. Um, run the risk of, of um, you know, so somebody saying, oh, well, you're accelerating the rate of fire, you're a criminal, because, you know, you took it from a 12-pound trigger pull to, you know, maybe a 4-pound trigger pull. Well, you know, the other thing about, too, uh, it, it says um, not to, basically not to exceed uh, the firearms firing capabilities, rate of fire capabilities, you know, rate of fire, if you don't modify the firearm, uh, the rate of fire basically comes down to the ability of the user. I mean, you know, Jerry Michalek has got to be one of the fastest uh, fingers I've ever seen as far as rate of fire goes. I mean, he can take a standard semi-automatic AR-15 and fire it and he's firing it so fast you'd think almost that it was fully automatic yeah and a, a, a friend of mine uh, mike yon he he owns uh double tap triggers llc um here in the town where i live and he, that's what he does he 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 builds binary triggers um uh, binary trigger you know pull bang release bang um, unless you, you flip it in the safe between between the banks um, yeah so, so so this is very much so uh, directed at him and and you know I mean he, he's got the appropriate licenses but this is just this essentially says that um, uh, after wait on and after the date that is 90 days after the date of enactment of this subsection it is unlawful so basically, um, yeah, he's got 90 days before he's completely out of business. He needs to, you know, uh, either sell, uh, destroy, or, uh, yeah, return uh, everything that he's had. But, but, but it's also interesting that it says, and, and this is, this is the, the tyranny that, that just lights my fire. It says, this subsection does not apply, and I'm talking about, you know, increasing the rate of fire. This subsection does not apply with respect to the importation for, manufacture for, sale to, transfer to, or possession by, or under the authority of the United States or any department or agency thereof, or a state or department agency, or political subdivision thereof. What the fuck? So you're basically saying, hey, all you average Joes, yeah, fuck you, you can increase your rate of fire. But the government, political subdivision? Of, of any of these can can hey they can have fully automatic guns get the fuck out of here man yeah no i i 100 i agree um and you know you've got all of the all, all of the people that argue with the second amendment oh well yeah you know well at this at, at, at that time you know Everybody was using muskets and, uh, you know, the militia and the military and the farmers, they were all using muskets. They all had the exact same kind of firearms and now technology has changed and blah, 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 blah. Okay, well, guess what? A lot of fucking technology has changed and I'm pretty sure the Founding Fathers expected technology to change somewhere along the way. Yeah, you know, I mean, just a reminder: the 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 federal government still has predator drones and uh, uh, hellfire missiles. Um, oh, and nukes, right? I mean, so, so I, I I don't see that argument as as at all relevant. 
Yeah, no, absolutely. Uh, <laughs> I've 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 yet to see anybody stare down, you know, a nuclear sub with, you, you know, a saw saying "Come at me, bro." I just I don't, I don't see it happening that way. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, I mean, if if the writers of this law get their way, um, you know, we'll be using harsh words and threatening language to defend our family from a home invasion. Yeah, and you know the other thing about it, you know, it talking it talking about uh, high capacity magazines. Um, basically, they're wanting to limit everybody to ten rounds or less for protection. Well, here's the thing about it. Um, I have person. Well, I won't say I have personally, but I have personally known people who have encountered instances where it took more than ten shots to kill the threat. Mm, mm, mm. Okay, so so you know I've got this theory that if you, if you really want to see the what's behind something or what's the driving force, follow the money. So down here it says priority in awarding grants under this section, the secretary shall give priority to programs operating in the 127 municipalities that have had the highest annual per capita homicide rates as measured over the most recent five years. What? Why 120? Where, where do you get 127? I mean, is it? Um, I mean, is this a foregone conclusion? And why is it um, over the last most recent five years? Right. So, so is this a race to see who has the highest homicide rates, so that they can then um, use the the money that they're collecting from all of these dealers, all of these people who are trying to stay lawful citizens, follow the rules. You know, the thirty percent increased tax on firearms, the fifty percent increased tax on ammunition. All of this is going to go to these municipalities for what? Yeah, yeah, that's. <laughs> oh my God. May, may, maybe one, uh, let's see, 127, maybe, uh, let's see, one, two, seven, that adds up to 10. There's the 10 commandments. Um, uh, you, know, you, you know, George Carlin said 10 is a powerful number. 10 sounds official. So seven plus two plus one, that's 10. You know, maybe that's what it was. Maybe, maybe it's some Illuminati conspiracy. Okay, now I'm following you. You know, I mean, it, it makes as much sense as everything else that's written in here. You know, it talks about funding for research on firearm safety and gun violence prevention. Um, and, and, and I can tell them, despite this $50 million grant for each fiscal year they want um, appropriated by the Attorney General, um, yes, yeah, so give me $5, I'll tell you what stops gun violence, and that's a good guy with a gun. Yeah, um, you know, let's let's talk about this statistic for Damn a it. second. I didn't get my five dollars first. Five dollars first. <laughs> let's let's talk about this statistic for a second. For the month of March, twenty twenty, March twenty twenty, all of this epidemic shit going on, almost two million guns were sold in the United States in the month of March. How many mass shootings did we have in the month of March? Wow. Um, well, if if there were, I don't think they made it uh, past the coronavirus stuff. But um, I, I'm, I'm going to guess um, two. That sounds like a reasonable number when you when you take the definition of mass shooting as two or more people being killed. But you know what happened today in Knoxville at about eight o'clock this morning? Mass stabbing. What happened? What happened? Yeah, mass stabbing. Trucker killed uh, three women and sent a fourth one to a hospital before he was shot and killed by law enforcement. Stabbed and killed three individuals at a truck stop in Knoxville, Tennessee, before he was killed by law enforcement. Hmm. But guns are the problem. Yeah, two million guns. I, I, I've got to wonder what is the um, what is the normal um 
Right, the guns are being sold. You know, because um, I, I I haven't bought any. Um, to be honest with you, I've I've, I've been kind of like, you know, eh, I better uh, keep an eye on what I got instead of uh, going out and drawing attention by adding more. But I wonder what the you know what what is the monthly um, sales for guns? I'm gonna look that up. Yeah, that's a really good question. Um, but I mean, I know the number of two million. It, it was actually like one point eight million or one point nine something like that. I think it was just south of two million. But it was it was enough to make the news. So obviously, that's more than what the norm is for a monthly, you know, outside of a pandemic quarantine, lockdown, stay-at-home order, whatever you want to call it kind of thing. Okay. Well, I'm The Guardian, which I'm, I'm, I, I, I haven't been able to check it, says that it's a 80% increase compared to the same month last year. Um, so, so, so what are they saying? Like, uh, uh, yeah, yeah, so... so. 80 percent yeah that's huge um it's, it's kind of like toilet paper you know why are people buying so much more toilet paper than they, than they need i mean you can only still fit so much down your shitter yeah yeah no i don't i don't understand any of it it's it it makes my head hurt when i try and think about it it really does but do you think that 5717 and the senate 3245 uh, do you think they had anything to do with really uh, driving these gun sales? Um, and because I'm sure we're not the first ones to discover it or talk about it. Um, I, I hope not. You know, I, I'd like to think that, that you know, maybe listeners um, know way more than we do. And they just tune in to see what uh, kind of dumb shit we can say about it. Um, so, so do you think that, that, that these bills were maybe designed for that very purpose? And it just happened to coincide with this pandemic. You know, it's an interesting theory. Um, and, you know, like I, like I said before at the start of the show, um, and like we talked about last week, um, H.R. 5717, latest action on that was on March 10th, was referred to the Subcommittee on Crime, Terrorism, and Homeland Security. So they are still trying to take action on everything. Everything. Wow, a lot just happened there. I'm not real sure what all that was. Yeah, yeah. Interesting. I, I, I guess that's the equivalent of um, mom flashing the lights at you, telling you to get your ass in the house. Yeah, maybe it is. Uh, and, yeah, looking at the time, it is about that time, so we do need to start wrapping it up here. Uh, don't forget to go on Facebook and look us up, uh, 2AT Second Amendment Talk. Also look up um, Rod's page, 2A Training, and uh, be sure to check him out. Give him a like and follow. Like us, follow us, interact with us, and also catch my show on Monday nights uh, here on Armed Radio at 10.30 p.m. Eastern Time. That's Two Beards Talking with uh, my co-host, Donnie J. Um, I got nothing else. Rod, you got anything for the listeners out there? No, 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 no. Stay safe and um, wash your hands, you nasties. Yep, and again, a big shout out to the troops and to our first responders and uh, healthcare workers doing everything for us out there. Uh, we appreciate everything y'all are doing. Keep up the good work and come home safe. We're all rooting for you. This has been 2AT Second Amendment Talk on Armed Radio. I'm Daniel Sanders for Rod Burks. Thanks for listening, everybody. Mm -hmm.